Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, Diane here, welcome to my studio. Today we, I hope everybody is well by the way, the sun's come out here so I'm feeling a little bit more chirpy. Uh, stopped raining at last. Um, today I'm going to paint some very loose and wet tulips. And I'm going to do that in a small format. I'm going to do it on a page of my, one of my Viviva color, uh, uh, what do you call it, sketchbooks. It's not really a sketchbook. This is painting paper. It's not really for just drawing on. Um, so anyway, if you have one of those, that would work well. Otherwise, just this is a kind of half A4 or about eight by four uh, piece of paper here. Uh, I think. Shall I measure it just to be on the safe side? Never mind. I'm just, anyway, you can see it's about as long as a paintbrush and about half as wide. Um, and I'm going to do some really loose uh, tulips. And I'm not going to draw anything, but I will do a sketch of the tulips once they're done and put it up on the website for you to download if you wish to do the tracing or have it as a guide for your drawing. Um, you don't have to trace it exactly, but it does help you to see the structure. And uh, yeah, so the colours that I'm going to be using, a very, very small range of colours actually today. I'm going to be using quinacridone gold here, which is a, this is a Daniel Smith one, but any brand will do. And this is permanent rose. Um, this is Old Holland, but Windsor and Newton, Schmincke, uh, they all do them. Yeah. Um, it's a normal colour, permanent rose, and it's kind of pink, as you can see. And then I obviously want some green for the leaves. And I've got some olive green here, and I've also got some yellow, and some, this is Payne's grey, or I've got some other blues here, which I can add to the green to knock it back a bit so that it's not quite so um, striking. Or if I wanted to do the leaves nice and bright, I've got yellow that I can add to this green to make it a little bit more vibrant. So that kind of depends what you feel is best as far as the colour combination goes. If you want to make a lot of contrast in your painting, then you'll probably use a more striking uh, difference between the green and the pink of the of the uh, tulips. But I'm, I'm probably going to be going for something which they call a little bit um, uh, more muted, a bit high key. Uh, okay, so let's pick up some um, plenty of water and I'll pick up some quinacridone gold and mix it with a little bit of pink to give some kind of um, a light orange colour. And I'm using one of my little flower shaped palettes here today. This paper is really smooth. This is um, not, not, N-O-T, not not cold pressed, it's not not cold pressed. If they would only sort out the language that they use for paper, it would really help. Anyway, it's not not. And so I'm going to just use my size 10 brush to put in the rough shape of a tulip. And I'm not going to agonize about this at all. This is three brush strokes to give you a flower and two to give you a bud then you can do one which is much more pink, just by adding more pink to that um, mixture that you've got there. And then in the middle, just get a little bit more water, a bit more paint, a bit more orange, a bit more pink, a bit more everything. I'm gonna do a bigger one here, and then maybe we'll do another bud. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, it's five, aren't there? So you could put another bud up there. I don't know if that's going to be right or not. Okay, so then pick up a bit more water and go back to the paint. And then we're just going to put in some more color. Now I'm not trying to avoid 
backgrounds. I'm not, in fact, I want to encourage them. I'm not trying to get a perfect graded wash because that's boring. I'm just dropping the paint in and letting it do the work. We have a rough shape of a tulip and that's what we want. If you like tulips that are losing their petals, you can have some dropping off if you want. Um, okay, so that's that. Now I'm going to pick up some green and pick, perhaps put a little bit of yellow with that to make it a little bit less dark. And then I'm just going to drag my brush down to put some stems in like that. You can let it touch the flower if you want so that you get a bit of a run. Something else you can do to make it a bit more interesting also is you can just put drops of water onto the area that you've painted and that will give you delicious backgrounds. And then if we want to do the leaves next, we come back with our green. And with this brush, you can get a fairly decent shape for a leaf just by starting off light and pressing down a bit harder and then lifting up and then maybe going over it again. And then you can drop in a bit more green in various splodgy places and just let that run. This paper being so smooth, you get a very, very different effect from when you paint on a textured watercolour paper. So be prepared to see something completely different happening. But it is it's nice because it feels like it's painting on satin, which makes a nice change. And then if you want, you can put some darks in. So pick up some blue and a little bit of green and give yourself some darker, darker green and then maybe put that near to the base of the flower and maybe into some of the leaves. And then I'm going to come back in with a third layer. For the flowers. of colour because it will obviously dry much lighter, always does. And then the next step is going to be to be using the pen. I've got my uh, dip pen here and I've got some Sennelier um, Beast, which is brown ink. And you could leave it like this, you know, you could. And when it's dry, it'd probably be quite pretty. But uh, another thing that you can do is you can come in with your pen and just outline, almost outline, your um, your painting. So you can add details that you couldn't do with a brush. So for example, tulip leaves have got lots of parallel, almost parallel lines running through them. So you could put those in, you know, using a pen. 
and when you're using this pen you can press lightly or you can press hard. When you press hard obviously you get a thicker line so that's really very good for shadow areas. And if you press hard near to where the paint's wet it will run in which might give you an interesting effect. Like that. And these sort of random happy accidents are, to my mind, pretty much what this is all about, painting. I have to remind myself of this all the time. I don't wake up in the morning thinking, ooh, I'm going to go and paint something random today. I usually wake up in the morning and think, oh, for goodness sake, what on earth am I going to... No, I mustn't say that. That's also not politically correct. No, but I do, you know, I mean, we worry about how we're going to carry on, what we're going to do. But when, you, when you've had your first cup of coffee and your third cup of coffee, and you start to feel a bit more um, relaxed about the whole thing. And you say, yes, well, actually, like I said many times before, this is not about becoming the prima donna of watercolour art. This is about helping people to relax a little bit and, and live. I'll wait for the flowers to dry a bit before I go in there with the ink because if I touch, they're very wet, so if I touch them now, they'll run too much. But I'm enjoying putting lines on these leaves and the stems, which is kind of transforming them from being just childlike lines drawn with a brush into being something that I might want to look out for more than one second at a time. I think flower is probably one of the most popular uh, painting subjects that's out there, isn't it? Most people, even men, like to paint them. Okay, so I'm going to, this is called cross hatching by the way, when you do lines and then you come back and you go across them, that's called cross hatching. And it's a way that they used to use when they did a lot of pen and ink work, engraving and so on, for um, uh, doing shadows. Okay, so I'm not going to paint, like I said, these, I'm gonna wait for them to dry, or I might even, uh, have a, have a go with the uh, hair dryer. Okay, so I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so that's dry now, and uh, I must admit the hair dryer played a part in that. So I'm now going to come in with some more pink, and I'm just going to put some uh, kind of, well, lines, I suppose, sort of thing. because uh, to just indicate the petals a little bit. Okay, and then now the last thing to do is um, to use the pen and the, the brown ink. And I'm not going to really go into the flowers so much as, um, as draw around the outside a little bit. I'm not going to do very much. 
just just a little bit. And then finally, a few little um, touches of, a few, a few more little touches of red, pink, pink. And there we are, that'll do. I think you might enjoy that. I think it could be useful as a motif for any kind of card for spring, anyone with a spring birthday. I don't know which month the Tulip is the birthday month four, but uh, it's probably somewhere, sometime around about now, isn't it? Anyway, so there we are. That's the final painting. I hope you enjoyed that. Have fun doing it. Give us a like and subscribe. Don't forget to go to the website dianantoncom to get your free download of the sketch. And uh, there's links and things like that in the description below for the different colored paints and other bits and pieces that I've used, which might be helpful for you. And also consider two things, joining our channel, which is wonderful because it supports us tremendously. And also there's a tip jar over on the uh, website, which is always looking for contributors. So pardon me for mentioning money and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye everybody. Bye bye.